All right, we've been driving around for like over half an hour. I wanted to find some new office spaces today and I had some thoughts on where we might be able to find something, but so far, haven't had much luck. We found this like church spot that you know, I think will be a fun spot to warm up. But it's got some open area, which is good because I want to spend some time talking about mixing roll and yaw so we can just kind of do that in the open area. And I know for a lot of you this is a fairly basic concept, um, but there are certain tricks that I would like to do a, a trick tutorial video about, but a big part of what I'd want to talk about is how you mix roll and yaw in a certain way. So I thought, let me just make a video dedicated to the concept of coordinating and cross-coordinating roll and yaw. Uh, coordinating being where you use roll and yaw in the same direction to turn and cross-coordinating being where you move the sticks together or apart so that you change how the roll looks relative to your camera angle. I'll explain a little bit more about that once we get in the air. But a while back, Joshua Bardwell actually did a really great video about the concept of cross-coordinating. So I'll link that, um, and some of this will be a little bit of re rehashing what he discussed. But um, let me get the um, stick cam strapped up. I swear, every time I want to do something where I have to talk to you outside, it's uh, windy. Got the, got the chest thing going almost. All right, so we're actually not going to be doing anything too crazy. But what I wanted to talk about is mixing roll and yaw. So the most basic thing you'll do with this is move the sticks in the same direction to turn. This is just a common technique that if you're racing or doing freestyle and the amount to which you mix them will define how flat or banked your turn is. So with less roll, my turn will be more flat. So we'll just do a real flat turn around this tree. The horizon didn't, um, didn't bank too much. And with this one, I'll do a more aggressive leading with roll and now the horizon's turning a lot and we're carrying more momentum through the turn. And so you can see that with racing, you want to you know, bank your turns more based on how you want to carry your momentum around the uh, turn. But with freestyle, you can think about doing different levels of mixing. So let's say I want to do a, uh, a, like a flat yaw spin as I, as I rise. See, so look how the horizon's staying really flat and I'm increasing altitude. And then the same thing goes with inverted yaw spins to get the horizon to stay um, even, even upside down, you've got to do mixing. So that's the most basic thing to play with, is just doing turns and, and using different levels of roll and yaw combined to either carry momentum with a nice banked turn or trying to do flat turns. Throttle cut. And we crashed. So that's everything that I really have to say about coordinated mixing. And again, that's where your roll and your yaw are moving in the same direction and you're using you know, more roll to, to bank a turn or less roll to have more of a flat turn. And let me put a new battery on here and let's start talking about a, uh, a more extreme scenario where you're actually using uh, roll and yaw in the opposite direction and the, uh, the effects of that, and we're calling that cross-coordination. All right, we got a fresh battery in there. So we were talking about moving roll and yaw in the same direction to either have a flat or a banked turn. Now let's talk about something else. Let's just do a roll where we use only roll input. You see how when I flipped upside down, I actually ended up looking at the ground? That's because our cameras are at an angle and you're flying at an angle. So when you roll the quad, you don't end up flat upside down. You end up with, uh, with an angle that adds to your camera angle and ends up pointing your camera at the ground, which is a you know, very cool dramatic effect. And when you're doing split S's, it can look cool to just go over it with some roll and you can um, you know, see the gap as you're floating over it. But now if you mix yaw in the opposite direction with your roll, you will counteract the angle that you're flying with. So now let's cross coordinate it. See how the horizon stayed really level there? What you can do is start playing with different amounts of using just roll or adding some yaw in 
to change how your rolls look. Um, and it seems really uncomfortable at first, but you will get used to it. And now I actually have a habit of always leading my rolls with yaw. So there I yawed before I even started adding roll to exaggerate the effects of what I'm talking about. So what Bardwell called that, what I'm calling it here is cross-coordinating. And you can use that to change the look of all your tricks. So instead of floating over things in a split S looking at the object, you can stay a lot more flat to the horizon even as you end up upside down. And again, not saying one is right or wrong, it's just a different look depending on how you want that trick to, uh, to feel. So let's do a really extreme scenario where I use a lot of yaw. Whoa, see I lost sight of the obstacle completely. And saved it. <laughs> oh, whoa. All the saves. Yeah, that prop is sounding a little, a little rough. So everything that we were talking about is driven largely by camera angle. If you, uh, if you were actually flying flat, yaw would just be yaw, roll would just be roll. You would turn around to turn flat with just yaw. You would do a really flat roll with just the roll input. But we have to have forward momentum, so we fly forward at an angle. Our camera is at an angle. So what that means is you have to mix roll and yaw. So like I said, if you mix a little less roll into a turn, you can have an apparently flat turn by rotating such that the camera stays flat even if the quad is actually both rolling and yawing or you know use more roll and do a banked turn and that's what you're going to want to do to carry your momentum around a turn in, in a race or something like that and now conversely when you start using the opposite direction and start pushing the sticks away or toward each other cross coordinating that's where you're going to start changing the behavior of your acrobatic moves so you know, if you're flying forward and you do just roll input you see how the camera ends up pointing downward so what you end up needing to do is use yaw in the opposite direction so that you roll about the axis of the camera and not about the axis of the quad so then the roll from a third person perspective kind of looks a little wonky you're actually swinging your tail around that's what you end up doing is swinging your tail around to uh, change how the apparent roll ends up looking in the video but try not to be overly concerned with what the quad is doing from a third person perspective and react to what you're seeing in the video feed and the response that you're getting from your input and I would say overall actually don't overthink any of this what you need to do is think about it practice a bit and let it become second nature I kind of had a difficult time explaining it because now it's become a force of habit to mix roll and yaw depending on what I want to do and so for example if I'm gonna go through a gap and I want to do one of those flat yaw turns to keep that object in frame as I pass it I don't actually think about exactly how much roll and yaw I have to mix it's just become a habit to know that if I want to keep the right it just you do it by feel and similarly if I want to do a roll so that the horizon stays level I don't think about how much counter added yaw I need to use I just kind of feel how I need to use it and so I may not end up with the horizon staying exactly at the center of the screen it'll be a little bit off but I mean you don't you don't need to be precise with this freestyle is supposed to be free form and you should let the imperfections of your flight show through because you know that's the character of your of your style so the exact results of your input depends on what angle you're flying at, what angle your camera is at, and actually also on how your rates are set up. So, you know, depending on how responsive your yaw is, that's going to change how much you need to input on the sticks to get, um, to get the effect that you want. And I've seen some people suggest that you want to set it up so that an equal amount of roll stick input and yaw stick input will give you a perfectly flat spin and then you know that's your baseline. I kind of disagree with that because what perfectly flat means will change again depending on what your angle at and what your camera's angle is at and I fly at 30 degrees like I mentioned before I always leave my camera there. Um, I don't concern myself with that. It doesn't matter if I end up with you know 
you know, this much yaw and this much roll and that gives me perfectly flat. You'll get used to it, you'll kind of soak up the variance. So tune your rates on all the axes to just be what you're comfortable with and learn to fly it like that. There's no right or wrong answer with any of this stuff, so it's all personal preference. I feel like I'm forgetting some stuff. Oh yeah, there is in some of the firmwares, like Betaflight, there are ways to set it up so that your firmware will actually mix roll and yaw for you. Um, I think it's like set cam angle, something like that, and you can put in your camera angle, and then if you give it a yaw input, it will mix your inputs so that the horizon stays flat if you're flying at a 30 degree, so that you're flat to begin. I, you know what, I don't mess with that stuff. I don't think, I don't think that's how you wanna fly it. I think you want to feel the quad and do it more manually. If, if you've had different results with having the flight controller do some of the coordination for you, uh, let me know actually, because I mean, I'm always interested in hearing the different perspectives. It's just not been something that I think works for me. I like to be in you know, full manual control of the maneuvers that I'm doing. We uh, got kind of bored with the first spot, taking a burger break. And then we're gonna go see if we can find a more exciting place to fly. We've been prowling Google Maps in the restaurant trying to find uh, a spot to fly. We couldn't find anything, but Jeff showed up. He's gonna save the day. He knows some spots. What's the plan? We're gonna head down to this. Yeah, this is this is pretty cool. I think it's better to set up out front or back. I don't know, back. I'm gonna go to the other side. Today's video is loosely about mixing yaw and roll to coordinate and uncoordinate. That's what about? Yeah. That's over before you came. Yeah, let's okay, basically that's how you do that one. Alright, well we're doing it. Do you have any any tips to add? Uh no, just practice it. <laughs> just do it. I mean I just explained the basics that like push them in the same direction to to like turn and you do you know, more roll if you want to bank a turn. And then I talked about doing them together and outward to like cross coordinate so that you can change like where your point of rotation is on the screen. So if you want to do what looks like a flat roll, you're actually swinging your tail around. Right. You're like, getting that booty moving, get that booty. Hey! <laughs> 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 